stop spraying the hair. Good morning. I am awake bright and early. It is 5.33, which is my appointment. And I'm about to head in and see my loctician. Now, this is the loctician that was in my other two um, Q&A videos that I had about a consultant with sister locks and things like that. Um, Julia, she is the loctician that established my locks and to this day is the fastest loctician that has ever been able to complete my locks. Okay, she's here. I'm gonna go. Before we get into the video, I just want to note that unless otherwise specified, these are thoughts and tips geared towards fully locked individuals. We will let you know in between our conversation when it's geared towards newer locked individuals, but this is just what I do because I have fully mature locks and I've been locked for 15 years. I just wish that we would adopt a less is more theory when it comes to caring for our hair. If it's in its natural state, it doesn't need a lot of add-ons and add additives. Um, you just need a good cleanser and a good moisturizer. You don't need to pull your hair left, right, up, down, and around me, styling, over-styling, over-processing with every product on the market. There's no need to put gel in locks. Locks and gel don't go together. Why are we Why are we doing this? You know, there's no need to spray your locks with water. It's not a plant. It's just not. These are dead cells. This is dead. Mm -hmm. Scalp is alive. Dead, alive. So I would like to treat the part that's alive because if I treat the part that's alive, the stuff that's growing out of it is gonna be healthy. So I want I want our ladies to focus more on their scalps than on their hair. And if they did that, they would essentially have healthier hair because you're going to the source, the root of things. Well, I will say I have had like periods where I did spray my hair with water, but mm -hmm. I noticed I only did that when my hair is longer mm -hmm. and because it's high porosity, because if I'm going so long in between washing, okay, my hair will get dry mm -hmm. like extremely dry to the point where it's rough and brittle mm -hmm. so like i like missed it but not like a routine thing it's more about a feel thing and how long i've gone without shampooing and conditioning but what are your thoughts on that i would recommend a hot oil treatment like back in the day okay like especially right now you know it's getting cold the air is dry what's wrong and you know you're gonna have to get a couple of tubes of bottles yeah you know, it's a lot of hair <laughs> but you can do a hot oil treatment and just sit, not necessarily under the dryer, but let it just sit. Mm -hmm. And then when you rinse it out or even wash it out, um, I think rinsing it out would be best. Rinse it out and just leave remnants of it there. Yeah. Okay. And then eventually yeah. that scalp will soak it up, drink it up, and it'll be distributed throughout your hair too. So it'll be shiny. Just don't want it to weigh it down too much, but hot oil treatments are usually a lot lighter than grease. And then hot oil treatments, do you put them through all of your hair or mm -hmm. just the scalp? All like of your hair and your scalp. Yeah. Put it through the whole thing. Well, I think I might try that because like, like you said, sometimes when I shampoo and condition, when I'm doing like a traditional wash day, I don't even technically need to shampoo my hair. Like those will be days where I just opt to just do like conditioner. Like mm -hmm. I like rub the water through my scalp, through the lengths of my hair, just like mm -hmm. absorb and do that. So I think I would incorporate like a hot oil treatment in between when it's not like dirty. Yeah. That's a good idea. In the winter time mm -hmm. is when it's best. Summertime, not so much. Yeah, the humidity, all the humidity is high. Is fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you should be straight, but I think less is more. I always think that theory, like me, uh, washing. Everybody talks about shampoo in the hair. Here we go. Shampoo your hair as often as you like. Just understand that every time you do that, it loosens up your retightening. Every time you do that, that's washing away natural oils from the scalp. Just know that, that you have to put the moisture back in if you're shampooing once a week, even if you're shampooing every two weeks. Really, the reason why I'm just not for shampooing often is because the R curl pattern doesn't even allow our natural oils to travel to the tips of our hair anyway, even when it was in a loose natural. Yeah. So it's so coily that oil is not gonna get all the way there versus being Caucasian, right? The hair is straight. That's why they wash often because it's straight. The oil goes all throughout. They have the oily hair, right? 
We don't have that. Our hair is mostly dry. Why is it dry? Because our, our texture is curly and that moisture cannot travel to the tips of that hair, that hair shaft, all the way to the tips. It can't get there. So that's why we do it. We need some grease, we need some oil. That makes sense. Yeah, so if I can just get people to understand that, uh, we should not be treating natural hair like our permed hair. Mm -hmm. And we don't know any better because that's all we've had, right? A press and comb, hot iron, flat iron, silk press, you know, that's all we've had. So we're just doing what we know. But it has nothing to do with our natural texture. Just know that. Well, I do have a question because mm -hmm. I get a lot of questions for newly established, like, sister lockers and everything. It's been a long time since I've been new. But would would you allow somebody who just got their hair retightened to use oil? And if not, when would they start using oil in their hair? They can use oil on their scalp, mm -hmm. not their hair. And that's, I don't know, that's the biggest confusion. Not here, there. Mm -hmm. Not here, this is dead, alive. We want to treat the scalp because, first of all, when you're brand new, you're not fully locked. You're in the lock formation, but the hair hasn't settled. It hasn't meshed together encased itself around itself it's not a true lock yet it's on its way right that won't happen until eight months to a year you know realistically it's not going to happen until that far off so for you to apply moisture to the hair itself when you're new you're retarding the locking process in order for the hair to lock it's got to dry out the hair has to dry out not the scalp. I know, let me say that one more time. <laughs> In order for the hair to lock, it's got to dry out. You cannot moisturize your hair while trying to lock and think that it will lock. It will not. It will soak it up. It will, it will unravel. It will be loose. And that's why it'll make the whole locking process longer, essentially. It will retard the locking process. I'm not saying eventually it won't lock, but for those of you all who say, it's taking me a long time to lock, stop spraying the hair. <laughs> and greasing it up. Stop it. It's not a perm. It's not braids either. It's locks. And it's your hair. So also, too, those who are out there, they still love the color, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Equivalent to a relaxer, you'll never lock. Don't worry about it. I've seen people color their locks right out their head because they didn't understand. That's why we tell you if you want color, to get that color before you lock, but just know that if you get the color before you lock, you're changing the molecular structure of the hair. Your hair will no longer be in its natural state. No, it won't, even though it's not perm, but it's color. So that way, you already open up the hair shaft. It's, it's, it's done deal. So you can or you can't begin locks on dyed hair? You can, okay. but trust and believe it will take 10 times as long on dyed hair than it will on undyed to hair. To lock. That's right. Gotcha. It's not gonna. It's not going to lock the same. Mm -hmm. And parts of it won't lock at all. Depending on the the uh, the color that you get, that red, that honey blonde, mm -hmm. they ain't locking. Good luck with it. <laughs> so you'd say if someone wants to dye their hair, they should wait till it's fully locked. I would want them to wait till it's fully locked. And even when they wait until it's fully locked, you still can risk it coming loose and unraveling mm -hmm. because it's a chemical. Mm -hmm. It's just like applying, and, 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 and I'm sorry, we don't understand this. It's just like applying a relaxer to your hair color and relaxer do the same thing they open up the hair shaft they change the molecular structure of the hair and that is it that's why you need neutralizing shampoo because you have to stop the chemical process after it's done so when you do that the hair is no longer in its original state it's no longer natural ladies sorry there's no blonde natural brown skin woman what is it we're gonna have uh, wait i don't know <laughs> where are they oh there's like like one island i think in, like, where is it australia like, like madagascar maybe i don't know where is it somewhere there's like a tribe well that is not your lineage you oh, know good and well is not your lineage yeah. you know that ain't you <laughs> stop and then no. i guess like the last question was what's your advice for women who talk about having thin hair or thinning edges and how to regenerate hair growth if possible you guys are not gonna like this 
First thing I do when I see thinning, I look for hair follicles. Hair follicles meaning the holes in the head where the hair comes out of, where it grows out of. If I don't see hair follicles, if it's a full moon shiny, like shiny, nothing going on, that's an indicator that they're dead. The hair follicles are dead. I'm not a dermatologist, but when I see that, that's what's going through my mind. And the next thing I do is say, hey, have you thought about making an appointment with your dermatologist? If they're complaining about it and things like that, then I say, you need to seek your dermatologist because they're the ones that can, um, you know, put it under a microscope, take a sample, you know, they can really get down to the nitty gritty because it may not be tension alopecia, it may be hereditary. It may be your mom's side of the family. That's just what happens to the women after a while, you know? Mm -hmm. They get thin in those areas. It may be a chemical that you're using. It may be even a medication that you're taking. And ladies, check this out. When I see thinning, you know usually what the culprit is? Menopause. <laughs> well, you say it's like it's ominous. Just saying. Okay. A lot of people don't consider that. You know, even me at 44, I'm in perimenopause right now. There's a change in my skin. There's a change in my hair, my everything. There's a change all over. But those women that I know that are in full-fledged menopause, hair loss is very common. Thinning in hair loss is common because their hormones are not in balance. And then I've heard that with people who ask this question who are also, I think, like postpartum like hair loss and things like that. That can happen like depending. Hormonal. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It is hormonal. Absolutely. So if they do have hair follicles that you can see, you think that there's a good chance to regenerate hair growth? Oh yeah, okay. go to your doctor. Especially if you know I'm postpartum. Mm -hmm. If you are perimenopause or in full-fledged menopause, if you are on anxiety medication, I've seen anxiety medication and high blood pressure medication take people's hair out or thin it out. What products would you tell people to use if they wanted to like regrow their edges or if you can even thicken your edges let me just say this some people say castor oil that's good for you anyway real thick though real gooey i know this is really gonna be controversial don't wash it what do you mean uh, what i mean is this i mean hold off from shampooing so often maybe shampoo every other month the longer you can wait, the more growth you will see. Providing all you have, you know, you're a healthy person, you're not on any medication, you're not going through menopause, maybe it's, you know, stress or something like, I don't know. But I think if you hold off on shampooing your hair so often, anybody with locks, depending on, you know, your profession, if you work in a warehouse or if you work out in a field, you know, agricultural, I can understand you shampooing your hair often because the elements, the dander, whatever. But if you're just going to work to sit at a desk all day, I don't really see the need for you to shampoo every week or every two weeks. Unless you like cigars. You smoke cigars, like going to the cigar bar. I mean, that could that could be something. Then you might need to. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, I would say that, too. Mm -hmm. But if you're not coming in contact with that kind of stuff, I mean, why not? Hold out for a minute. I know what you're saying. Oh, I work out, so I have my, I don't like my hair to stink. Well, bacteria stinks, not sweat. I have that issue for you guys to, like, know. And that's one reason why I went to a dermatologist, because I have a dry scalp. And I was wondering if it was because... I was like working out too much or if there was like a fungus there's no fungus I just have a dry scalp but they did say that if you're emitting like an odor it's probably a bacteria it's a bacteria and then washing your hair isn't gonna really help too much and adding water to the bacteria actually makes it grow more so you need to go to a dermatologist go to a dermatologist make your appointment mm -hmm. so it's not that oh some people do sweat in their head more than others this is true this is true but again if you're not going anywhere, you're not really doing anything, why not just pull your hair up on top of your head, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on the length. Wear a sweatband. Mm -hmm. Don't let your hair hang down while you're working out. Pull it up on a bun in a bun if it's long enough. If it's, you know, and do it that way. Also, too, it wouldn't hurt, you know, afterwards to go ahead and, and dry it immediately if you sweat that heavy. Maybe you want to take it and put the uh, blow dryer on low kind of go through it to soak up that moisture real quick you know you can do that too but that's not going to cause uh the hair to smell i mean anything you can think about you know um 
washing clothes mm -hmm. and you forget the clothes in the washing machine and you come back and that's the mildewy smell. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. So some of you all might say, well, what about that? Then you're leaving your hair wet a long time. Or, you know, something's going on to where we need to soak that moisture up. That's why I say it, after you work out, if you've been in, I guess, a Bikram yoga, hot yoga, whatever, and you done sweated everything, you just dripping all over the floor, then maybe you need to get that blow dryer on low mm -hmm. and go through your hair so that it won't just sit mm -hmm. and sit and sit. Because I, I get that. I do. And sometimes that's just goes for when you wash your hair as well. Like... I personally, guys, don't like to use heat on my hair, um, especially in the spring and the summer when it can air dry. Um, but in the fall and winter, if I'm inside, I tend to not, not only just because my hair is so long, I tend to not focus on if my hair is like bone dry. I'll make sure the roots are dry at the bare minimum and then it can be a little damp, no dripping throughout the lengths of my hair and then I go on about my day. But I try to reduce the amount of heat because I genuinely think that that's one of many reasons why my hair is able to hold a curl for so long. A lot of people tell me that their hair is not holding a curl. I usually ask them, did you start with dyed hair, relaxed mm -hmm. hair? Because mm -hmm. like you just said, it's difference. Change in the hair structure. It's not gonna lock, you guys. That yeah. hair is forever changed. Mm -hmm. Much the less hair, the curl. Yeah, the only natural hair is coming out of your scalp. And then length. If your hair is long, you just have more weight, so it's not gonna be as springy mm -hmm. of a curl, but you can still get a curl. And yeah. then the curl longevity. You might be having your blow dryer on a lot, a little too high and a little too mm -hmm. hot. So mm -hmm. those are all things to think about in your daily regimen. Turn it on low. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think those are the only questions I had off the top of my head. You'll be seeing me again <laughs> hey. at some point when I'm back in Atlanta. That's the only reason why I'm not here all the time. Mm -hmm. But and also for my people who are learning how to self-retighten, I will say this time and time again. Keep your lock in the back of your pocket. I moved away almost two years ago, and I have not been able to find somebody who could do my hair the way that Julia does. Not just because she's the one who started my hair, but it's because she's so seasoned. How long have you been? 17 years. Exactly, and I've had my locks for 15 years, and she is the lock that established them as well. Like, it's okay if you need to come back to your lock -tician. Like, there is no shame. I would be sitting here. I don't own her. Right. <laughs> she does not own me. Mm -hmm. She can break bread with whomever she chooses to. And it is, we need to treat it. Uh, other fellow consultants, if you're out there listening, let's treat it more like a village and a community. And let's embrace people. There's enough for everyone. We don't have to stay claim and that's mine and not yours. There will be times when my schedule is not compatible with the money's mm -hmm. and vice versa. But I expect her to still get a service performed that she needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, people. If Publix doesn't have what you need and Kroger does, am I cheating on Publix by going over to the Kroger and getting what I need? <laughs> You know, I mean, come on. If my nail tech is out sick or decided they're just not going to do nails anymore, do I just go with my nails looking crazy and my and my feet? No, I find another nail tech that I feel is uh, as competent and talented and professional, and I go with that. We do not own each other. Mm -hmm. This is a revolving door. People can come in and out of it. And who's for you is for you. People want to rebook with you, they will promise you they will mm -hmm. people are loyal to who they want to be loyal to and guess what if they're not that opens the door for about three or four more to come in that can be so we don't want to get into the habit of making people feel like we own them I agree and so. that's why I felt comfortable learning how to even self-retighten in the first yeah. place it's a necessity for some people if, you're, if you travel a lot like yes. I do you need to know how to do it because you might not be able to do your whole head but I guarantee you your loctician when you are able to see them again are going to thank you for doing the best that you could trust me we will we thank you <laughs> because uh, to play catch up to truly play catch up on a head like remember COVID you remember when nobody could get their hair done, I'm spraying her down with some tea tree mint on her scalp. It's on her scalp. I got that from uh, TJ Maxx or Marshalls. That's on her scalp, <laughs> not her head. Again, that's the alive part, the one that's alive right here on the scalp. 
Yeah. And because I just got through pulling the crap out of her hair, I would think that would be most soothing. See, I'm opening that up like that. I'm spraying the scalp. <laughs> See, I'm spraying the scalp. I'm spraying yeah, not the hair. I could care less about the hair. The hair is dead. All right, y'all. I'm gonna there I wrap go. this up. There we go. go. There's a the phone. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in. And if you have more questions for Julia, let me know. And whenever I see her, I'll be able to answer those again. And all of her information is gonna be in the description box of the video. <laughs> all right, loves. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>